In this problem, we have a circular rod that is fixed at one end and has a torque of 100 newton meters applied to it. This solid circular shaft has a radius of 0.05 meters. We want to find the max torsional stress on this shaft. We will assume that the shaft is within the elastic limit of the material. I have represented the torque on the right of the screen as two coupled 1000 newton forces acting on the radius. So the equation for the max torsional shear stress, also known as the shear stress on the outside surface of the cylindrical rod, is torque times the distance to the center, in this case it will be the radius, divided by the polar moment of inertia. So now as a refresher to what the polar moment of inertia is, let's recall what the planar moment of inertia is. We have a meter stick that is easy to bend if we apply a force down on the skinny side, but if we flip it 90 degrees and apply a force on the wide end, it doesn't bend as easily. Notice that the same amount of material is in the ruler. We have just repositioned it to allow the ruler to be more rigid when we apply a force on it. When we flip the ruler, the planar moment of inertia increases, which increases the part's rigidity. Now for the case of a torque on a shaft, we use the polar moment of inertia, which is the resistance for a certain shape to strain when a rotational force or torque is applied. In this example, I have a pool noodle I am torquing to show that the outside surface is strained. Notice how the grid of rectangles turns into a grid of parallelograms. Recall my shear strain of a block with the shear force applied to it video. So the larger the polar moment of inertia, the more resistance the shape has to straining under a given torque. It will also have less of a max shear stress given the polar moment of inertia is in the denominator of the formula. So a greater value will output less stress max. Now you can complete calculus or look up the value for the polar moment of inertia of the shape you are working with. In this video, we will just look up the equation, which is 1 half pi times radius to the fourth power. This is the polar moment of inertia for a solid circle. Let's take a look at the unit analysis for the torsional shear stress formula. We have newtons times meters squared in the numerator and meters to the fourth power in the denominator. This means that once we cancel out the meters squared, we are left with our desired units of stress of newtons per meter squared. Sometimes I like to visualize what the equation is actually doing. So on the bottom of the screen, I have that the total torque, or two times one of the coupled moments of force times radius, times the radius divided by one half pi r squared, which is an area of a circle, times the radius squared is what our equation is doing. Looking at this equation, we can see that everything gets canceled out except for the four times one of the coupled forces divided by the area of a circle. So four times one of the coupling forces divided by the area of a circle is another way to find the torsional shear stress. Now if we plug our numbers into the formula and press the enter key on our calculator, we get about 509,000 newtons per meter squared, or pascals. Let's say you want to find the shear stress at any given point in the circular shaft. We can simply take the shear stress max times the distance to the center from the desired point divided by the radius or distance from the center to the outside edge. This gives us the shear stress at any given point. Notice how if we put all of the forces on the shaft as it gets closer to the center, we get less force and less force. For this reason, it is more efficient material slash mass wise to go with a hollow shaft in applications that don't require limits on space. The hollow shaft with a larger diameter has a greater polar moment of inertia. That concludes this video. Hopefully I've earned a like, share, or subscription. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy one of these videos as well. Thank you for watching.